Welcome. The title of today's notes worksheet is Rational Expressions Day 2. If I remember correctly, we did three of the six operations and manipulations on rational expressions yesterday. We did the simplification piece, and then we did the multiplication and division. And so today what we're going to do is the addition and subtraction, and then take a look at fractions within fractions, uh, and see if we can kind of simplify those. So let's start it out. I think we ended yesterday's lesson just talking about um, having to add and subtract fractions and getting a least common denominator. And uh, so what we need to do is just review how we go about getting a least common multiple of those denominators. So let's kind of start this out right away here. Uh, example one, it just says find the least common multiple. And here's how we kind of broke it down yesterday, if you recall. So the first order of business is to factor each of the expressions, break everything down into a product of its prime factors. So in this case, as you can see, it's just x plus 2. So I know it seems a little weird, but I'm going to go ahead and write x plus 2 right there. This x minus 2 right here is, is, again, just a prime factor, so I'm going to take that as well. I put a little vertical curtain in between the two, and basically you have a, a list, or two separate lists, I should say, uh, each one in broken down into its product of factors. And so what I do is basically just work left to right, and I take any factors that are in the list, and if you remember uh, yesterday, what we did is we crossed out any redundancy. So uh, I would take the x plus 2. There's no x plus 2 in the other list. Um, I take the x minus 2, and there was no redundancy on that. And so as a matter of fact, this one's pretty straightforward. That would be the least common multiple of those two algebraic expressions that we started with. This divides into our least common multiple, and this divides into our least common multiple. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and try the next one. I would encourage you maybe to kind of pause the video for a sec, see if you can pull this one off. If you can pull this one off, then you're exactly where we need to be, uh, kind of going into the addition and subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and start it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and factor this piece right here. And it looks like from my vantage point, we're going to go ahead and take out a greatest common factor of 5x. And then looks like get x plus 3. So that's that factored right there. And in this, just a nice quadratic trinomial, I'm going to go ahead and take it as x plus 3 times x plus 3. I put my little vertical curtain in. And then, as mentioned, all I do is I go left to right. I take all the factors. But if there happens to be a redundancy in the other list, then I would cross out the redundancy. And so what I would do is take the 5. Here we go. Here's the 5. Good. No 5s over here take the x, here's my x, take it, no x is over here, take the x plus 3, there's the exact same x plus 3 right here, so there's the redundancy, the exact same one, but then of course as I move left to right here, now that's gone, but I do have another x plus 3, and I'm just going to go ahead and put a squared on that if everyone's okay with that piece. And as a matter of fact, that would be your least common multiple of the two algebraic expressions given. And when we go ahead and uh, add and subtract, if these were denominators, this would be our new denominator, essentially. All right, good. So let's kind of get into that piece then. Let's see if we can do a little addition and subtraction. Uh, I just threw just some ideas, some, some strategies there. As we go through the process, hopefully it'll make more sense. But uh, as you can see, just in terms of me reading them, Number one on, on your list says find that least common denominator. So we're going to go LCD on these all the way. Uh, number two, rewrite each rational expression with your answer from step one as the denominator. So what we're going to do is change the fractions. We're not going to change the value, but we're going to change the form of the fractions to include our new denominator. Then we're going to perform the operations on the numerator. Don't forget, multiply before addition or subtraction. And then, of course, we do keep the denominator as is. So the way I thought we would do this, everybody, is with one just very concrete example, just kind of go through those strategies, those ideas. And then when we do some more of the ab abstract ones, you'll see that it's the exact same process, obviously just uh, more difficult manipulations. So let's start it out there. Um, here we go, just a nice simple one, 3 eighths plus 1 14, something like that. And again, the, the first order of business, everybody, is to go ahead and get an LCD on this. Be an, Interesting idea if you can go ahead and try sort of the little breakdown that we've been doing. Maybe you can pull that off. 
but I need a least common denominator on 8 and 14. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and break it on down here, sort of the way I did this. So 8 would be 2 times, oops, let me just quickly circle the wrong thing there. There we go, circle that 2. So 2 times 4, and then 4 is really 2 times 2. So this would be our list right here, 2 times 2 times 2. And in 14, everybody, that breaks down nicely just to 2 times 7, and both of those are prime. So I'm going to go ahead and circle those. And then if I kind of go through left and right here, take all my factors but cancel out any redundancies. So moving left to right, here's a 2. I'm going to take it. But in the other list, there's the exact same 2. So that one gets crossed out. But then I have in that list another 2, in that same list another 2, and then a 7 over here. I'm, I'm believing the product of those factors should be the least common multiple of 8 and 14. And when I do 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, I do get 56 as my least common denominator. All right, so I, again, I went through that that way, um, but however you're able to pull it off, we do need to know that we're going to go ahead and write these in 56, essentially. Okay, well, I do it in one shot. Um, some students and teachers like to see it in two different fractions. I just believe it's a little cleaner doing it in one one good fraction with our new and improved denominator, which is now 56. So I'm going to go ahead and write those two fractions in 56. And so all we have to do is now think about how we changed each denominator from the original to the new and improved. And however we change the denominator, we have to compensate by doing the same thing on the numerator. So what I mean by that is it looks like we started with 8, and now our new denominator is 56. 8 times 7 is 56. So if I change the denominator by a factor of 7, then I have to change the numerator also by a factor of 7 to keep it the exact same fraction. And so as you can see, I'm going to take that 3 and multiply it by 7. Nice. However you change the denominator is exactly how you have to change the numerator. And now you're writing it in an equivalent fraction, in this case, common denominator. So let's go ahead and do the next one. I put my plus in between just like that. And then here's the same deal. Old denominator, new and improved denominator. Well, what did I do to 14 to get to 56? It looks like I multiplied it by 4. So 14 times 4 is 56. So to compensate everybody and make it the same fraction, I have to take the numerator and also multiply it by 4. Okay, good. Now the denominator stays, guys. Don't touch that denominator. All we have to do now is play cleanup on the numerator. And that's where we go ahead and do our order of operations, of course. As we all know, multiplication comes before addition. So make that happen. I'm going to do this in two steps for us. 3 times 7 is 21. 1 times 4 is 4. So I perform the operations on the numerator. First, the multiplication. And then, of course, obviously, the addition. And there's your winner. You know, if we can reduce it, we would reduce it, but uh, that looks to be legitimate from what I see. So keep that process in mind. Again, I tried to do it with a very uh, concrete example initially, because if you look at part B, now all the variables come into play, and we get some pretty heavy-duty ra uh, rational expressions. So I guess it's time. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull this off. So off to the side, everybody, here's you know, just what I would do. Let's go ahead and find an LCD. So the first order of business is to see what each of the original denominators would break down as, and that will allow us to get the least common multiple of those denominators. So everybody, I'm going to factor the left one, and I see that as x plus 7, x plus 1. Hope everybody agrees on that. Okay, my little vertical curtain right there. And then the second one, everybody, here's the original denominator. Hey, guys, I'm looking at a, an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. All right. So as you, you can see, obviously, in, in this entire first unit dealing with uh, algebraic expressions, a lot of it does come down to factoring. So hopefully that works for you. And now let's go ahead and take 1. So take the x plus 7. Good. Take the x plus 1. 
but here's the exact same x plus 1 in the other list. So cross that out. That is a redundancy. We don't need it. But there is that extra x plus 1 right there, and we do need that one. All right, and that, I think, is going to be our least common denominator. So let's take a step back for just a second, and now think about what the goal is. In order to combine these together via subtraction, what we have to do is write these two fractions in the denominator that we found over here. So I do it in one shot. Again, some students and teachers like to do it separately into two, and if you'd like to, um, kind of see that process, you let me know and I'll show that to you. But essentially what I do is now I want both of those in this single least common denominator, just like that. And so let's think about how we change the left and we'll compensate on its numerator. Let's see how we change the right and we'll compensate on the numerator. So let's go for it. Left first, everybody. So think about this. Watch it unfold. Think about that is the original denominator right here, right? And how did we change from original to the new and improved? Well, the original denominator, I hope everybody agrees, was this, right? x plus 7, x plus 1. That's this, x plus 7, x plus 1. Well, obviously, we have something in addition to x plus 7, x plus 1 down here. We have x plus 7, x plus 1, but we also have another x plus 1. And so it looks like I changed this denominator by multiplying by x plus 1. I hope everybody sees that piece. If we change the denominator of a fraction, then we have to compensate by changing the numerator in the exact same way. And so that's the key. If I multiply the denominator by x plus 1, then I multiply the numerator by x plus 1. And that's what I did right here. So this now is exactly what this is up here. As I said, in addition and subtraction, we want to keep our least common denominator. Don't touch that once you have that in place. Okay, good. Guys, I'm going to put a little minus in between, and let's repeat the process on the right side. So the question, of course, becomes, how did you change the denominator from the original to the new and improved? So this was x plus 1, x plus 1, if you remember correctly. Now I have the x plus 1, x plus 1, but I also have x plus 7 as part of the denominator. So it looks like I multiplied this by x plus 7. And so as a result, I have to multiply the numerator by x plus 7. All right, that's pretty much it. You're not canceling anything out. Kind of talked about that last day or two. Nothing cancels here because this is separated by uh, subtraction. And we wanted this anyway, didn't we? We wanted that as, a, as the least common denominator. As I said, leave it, because that was the goal. Okay. Well, guys, uh, now it's just how can you simplify? So multiply and multiply. I don't mind taking the lead on this. If you want to go ahead and foil a few of these out, you're more than welcome to. But I'm going to go ahead and foil this and then foil this, and then we'll perform some subtraction. So if I foil that first one, everyone, I, I get this. I get 2x squared. Um, looks like I get minus x, minus 3. And then we're going to be a little extra careful with subtraction. I, I've seen probably more mistakes with subtraction than addition. And I'll show you where in just a second. But it looks like if you FOIL that, you get that piece right there. And again, just keep the denominator. You spent so much time building, creating that least common denominator. No reason to mess with it. That stays all the way through your process. Now, one thing I would mention is these parentheses right here are, are not really necessary. I put them in, but you know what? They, could have, they didn't have to be there. These parentheses, I think, are pretty necessary when dealing with subtraction. So just be careful of one thing. It's really this polynomial minus this entire polynomial. So that subtraction goes to the x squared, the subtraction goes to the 5x, and the subtraction goes on the negative 14. So be a little extra careful with subtraction. Uh, we'll see this all semester long. And so just make sure you put that second piece in parentheses so you know that the minus distributes in. OK, well, I'm going to go ahead and do it because, as I said, multiply first, then subtract. So 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared. Negative 1x minus 5x happens to be negative 6x. And negative 3 minus 
negative 14 looks to be positive 11. And there we go, x plus 7, x plus 1 squared, and that's our winner. Okay, I'm going to box that up as I box the last one. And that's great. Again, if you can sort of go from here and simplify it, so be it. Most of the time you can't. All right, good. Let's try one more. So letter C. Um, good one, good one. Especially on the LCD. So I would encourage you to take a moment and pause the video and see if you can come up with an LCD on this one. And then we'll go from there. Yikes. Interesting. All right. Here we go. I see the left one as x and x plus 1. I see the right one as x squared. If it's okay with you, I'm going to write that as x times x. And then x minus 1. Okay, so good one right there. I kind of like that. And, and pulling out that x squared, I, I don't know, I, I find it helpful to see it as x times x when dealing with something like this. Because now when I go left to right, some good things happen. So let's see, I'm going to do that. I take my x, there it is, but there's the exact same one. Take my x plus 1, that's good. Now I take another x from over here. Now if it's okay with you, I'm going to go ahead and say that's x squared. And then this one is x minus 1. All right, that was probably one of the harder ones that we've seen, finding the LCD. If that doesn't click for you, please let me know. But essentially, two lists, and I did exactly what I did before. I took this x, but here's the exact same one, so that got crossed out. But there was that extra x there from that x squared, and so we took it. Okay, least common denominator is ready, everybody. So... I'm going to get it going up here. Now remember, just think how you changed from old to new. Do it on the left, do it on the right, and let's hope we've got it. Okay, everyone, let's see. So everyone, take a peek. This is the old or the original denominator. This is the new and improved. If it helps you with the original denominator, just think this is it in factored form. So think of the factors here that are here. And now think about what's new here that's not here. And that's how we changed it. So it looks like, first of all, I have an extra factor of x. It was x. Now it's x squared. The x plus 1 was there. Uh, but there was no x minus 1. So it looks like we did multiply this by x minus 1 as well. So I'm seeing the additional pieces, the additional factors of the denominator were another x and the x minus 1. I hope everybody agrees on that. And so as a result, I'm going to have to take that numerator and multiply it by exactly that, the x and the x minus 1. So however you changed the denominator, of course, please make sure you change the numerator in the same way. Okay, plus goes in between. Now let's think about this. Here's the original denominator and here's the new one. If it's tough to kind of see it from this form, go over to your little area here. And let's see, so I have the x squared, I have the x minus 1. The only thing that's new from my vantage point is, is this x plus 1 right here. This was x squared and x minus 1. Now we have the x plus 1 in addition to that. So if I change the denominator by a factor of x plus 1, then I have to change the numerator by a factor of x plus 1. Excellent. Hey, everyone, it's pretty much uh, in your hands. If you can kind of pull this off, that would be great. You know, I'd, I'd do a little pause and then come on back and see if you knocked it out. But uh, multiply first. I'd kind of distribute that 4x in. Foil here. Then do the addition. All right, let's see. I have a 4x squared and a minus 4x. And then over here, with plus, you can let it go a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and still put it in parentheses. Good habit to develop. And maybe something like that would do. And, and again, if you want to do it this way, you're more than welcome to. But essentially, when you add or subtract um, polynomials, which you're doing on top here, you basically are going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I have that at this stage. I'm probably going to move this just up here as I have the space. But essentially, the denominator stays again. Sorry for being redundant on this, but 
you know, once you get that denominator, that is a great first step, and keep it. Don't touch that denominator. You did exactly what you needed to do. So I just keep writing that, and then I just keep working with the numerator. So everyone, I, I have a 4x squared plus a 1x squared. That's 5x squared. I have a negative 4x plus a negative x, so that would be minus 5x. And I don't have any units over here. Add negative 2. So something like that. And I think that's it. So pretty abstract in nature, but an interesting skill set nonetheless. And see if you can kind of pull that off. Okay, good. So some good practice there with that piece. Um, the next order of business, kind of the last one. So we've done, let's just quickly recap, I guess. We simplified, we multiplied, we divided, we added, we subtracted, and now it's time to take a look at what are called compound, sometimes called complex fractions. And so basically it's fractions within fractions. So fractions within an overall fraction. Something like that. And obviously you'll see a variety of examples of this momentarily. Okay, so I'm going to go to my next screen there. And as you can see, this is the beauty of these notes worksheets. You know, I can just give you an example like that. And, and as you can see, here it is. Here's the overall fraction. It's like one numerator over one denominator. But within that numerator, there are fractions. Within the denominator, there are fractions. So fractions within the overall fraction, I guess. And uh, the, the way this kind of goes about is, is really there are two ways to pull this off. There's a formal approach and sort of an informal shortcut approach. We are going to, of course, do the informal shortcut approach, which happens to be method two on your little sheet here. So let me do a very, very quick read through, and then we'll kind of get down to the business at hand. If you don't like this shortcut, by the way, um, you are more than welcome to inquire about method number one, which is a very standard way, but certainly works wonderfully. Because if you sort of notice, this fractions within fractions, it's all just operations, right? Can you add two fractions together? Sure. Can you subtract two fractions together? Sure. And then once you do that, once you combine these, and once you combine these, can you do this right here, which happens to be division? A fraction is just division. So if you get a single numerator, and you get a single denominator, then it's just division with that. And so that's exactly what uh, method one would be, is combine the numerators together, com uh, numerator fractions together, combine the denominator fractions together, and then division. Interesting. Just, it's basically just a combination of the operations that we've been looking at now over the last day and a half. I just happen to like method two. It's a little cleaner and a little quicker. So as you can see, method two, it goes down to the, the LCD. So it says, find the LCD of all the rational expressions in its numerator and denominator, then distribute the LCD into the numerator and denominator of the overall fraction, and yeah, we do have to simplify. So it's, it's a way to clean out the fractions within fractions relatively fast. Let's hope that. Now there's this little question why you can do this, this little shortcut. We'll, we'll get to that in just a little bit. If you don't mind, I'm going to kind of leave that blank. I think I'm going to do a couple things first, then go back to that question. Maybe we'll do A and B first and go back to it, and then potentially do C and D after the fact. All right, guys, so reboot, and let's see if we can go ahead and pull this off together. So we're going to start out with a relatively easy one here, to be honest. Um, just kind of get our bearings on it, and then they'll, they'll get a little harder. So what I do, and it's totally up to you. You don't have to do this by any means. But I, I like rewriting the fraction. And if I see a whole number there, kind of like this, I, I put it over 1. And again, you don't have to do that by any means if you don't want to. I'm just a very visual person, and the symmetry behind that just kind of helps my eye. But um, totally unnecessary. And the bottom line here is, as you can see, when, when I write it like this, I have four fractions, 1, 2, 3, and 4, within this overall fraction right here. And so what I would ask you to do is stare at this for a second, one, two, three, four denominators. Could you tell me what the least common denominator is out of those four? Now, again, because we're kind of doing it this way, if you can't figure that out, you would do four lists. I know that's kind of crazy. They're all factored, so they're all prime. 
and you would just kind of do this piece right here, and you would take the 1, cross out the redundancy, you would take the x, cross out the redundancy, and hey guys, of course, the least common d denominator is x. So I'm going to write that, that's your LCD. Okay, totally your call. If you saw, hey, I, I can look at that and be like, the LCD is x, then you don't have to go through this hoopla right over here. But regardless, what we're going to do at this stage is now multiply that LCD into each of the four individual fractions. So we're going to distribute it. We're going to do it once, twice, and then down here, everybody, we're going to repeat. We're going to do it once and then twice. So we're going to clean out. That's going to be the beauty of it. By doing just that piece, distributing the x into each of those four fractions, we should get rid of all the fractions within the fractions. Let's see it. Here we go, everyone. First and foremost, what is x times 1? Well, x times 1 is x. Okay. There's my plus right here. Comes on down. Then we reset, and I do it again. Distribute it in here. Now watch the beauty of this one. What is x times 1 over x? This is multiplication, of course, because we're distributing. What happens when I do x times 1 over x? Well, the x's should cancel. And again, if you're not sure with that, I, do, I tell students all the time, work off to the side. This is basically that operation right there. That's exactly what I mentioned we're doing. x times 1 over x, and there it is. And do you see that the x's would cancel? This cancels with that. Multiplication, you can cross-cancel. And when you do that, you just get 1. And so the beauty of this is the denominator disappears. Okay. Now let's reset and do the same exact thing on the denominator of this fraction with these two individual fractions. Same thing, guys, x times 1. I hope that's pretty straightforward for you. And then minus, and then I do it one more time, x times 1 over x. That's exactly this piece right over here. It's just down on the bottom, and x times 1 over x. The x's cancel, and you get that. So take a look at what we started with. Take a look at where, where we end. And do I have any more fractions within the overall fraction? No. It's perfect. And that's it. So uh, again, this is an equivalent expression to this up here. Obviously, quite a bit more simplified. All right. So again, we'll kind of come back to the why this works momentarily. But let's try letter B. So I'm going to rewrite. Again, it's just kind of my thing over here. So x over x minus 2. I like the 1 over 1. I have a 3 over x squared minus 4. And then another 1 over 1. All right, so now let's see how your algebraic skills are, everybody. First and foremost, um, LCB time over here. Let's go ahead and think about what that LCD is. I have this, 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 and this. I hope everybody does realize that this is x plus 2, x minus 2. And so it's sort of a redundancy on that x minus 2. I, I see that as the LCD. If you want to go ahead and make your four lists on that, you would kind of get the 1, you'd get the x plus 2, x minus 2. So I believe that's our LCD. And so what we're going to do here, if I have enough room on the left side to pull this off, is I'm going to multiply everything, each of those four fractions, by x plus 2, x minus 2. Again, a little tight in here, but see if I can get it to work. Okay. So, guys, again, you're going to do it on the numerator once, then reset and do it twice. On the denominator, everybody, you're going to, you're going to multiply it in once, and then reset and do it twice. Okay, well, let's see how we're going to pull this off. So if you need help off to the side, write things off to the side, but I'm going to take this and distribute it in here. And the whole reason for doing that is to get rid of the denominators, specifically this one and this one here. Obviously, the one is sort of irrelevant. Okay, well, when I go ahead and do this, when I multiply this in here, I will tell you right away that the x minus 2s cancel, one on top, one on bottom, so cross-canceling, and then I'm left with just x and x plus 2. So I've got that piece right there. Again, if you're not sure, I can do a little work off to the side to show that to you. So I do this, 
Okay, and then times this right here. That's basically what I'm doing. That is the operation in a nutshell. And as you can see, this would cancel with this down here, cross canceling, and I'm left with these two pieces. Okay, if you want to go ahead and distribute that in at this stage, you can. No big deal. Next one is to take reset this times 1. And again, anything times 1 doesn't matter. Just x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, very good. There's your top. And again, no more little denominator right here. Okay, good. Now, what happens on this fraction right here? Ooh, hold on. I got a little... Let's clean that out a little bit. So, x plus 2, x minus 2. There we go. And this was x squared minus 4. Okay, good. Hey, now, what would happen here, by the way, when we go ahead and do this piece? This times this, well, the x plus 2, x minus 2 is on the top. It is also on the bottom. This should cancel with this. I believe we're left with just a 3. And again, if you're not sure, let me just work off to the side for you just to show you. So here's your x plus 2, x minus 2. This is what you're doing. And we all know, of course, x squared minus 4 is that piece. And this cancels with that. That cancels with that. And you're just left with 3. Awesome. One more to go. This distributes into the 1. And again, anything times 1 is just itself. Okay, now, obviously this one's a little harder than the previous one, but it worked out in the exact same way. Do I have any more denominators or fractions within this overall fraction? No, no, it's, it's looking good. Now, the only thing is we, we do need to simplify. So please, guys, don't stop at this stage. Start to do your operations on the numerator. Do your operations on the denominator. Denominator, excuse me. Clean that out. So I'll do this in two steps, but I would multiply first, just like we always do. And we get this piece right here. Okay. Then the denominator. Get that right there. Looks good. I would kind of clean it out just even a little more. Let's see what we can combine together. I get a 2x squared. It looks like a, guess a, we get a plus 2x minus 4. And then down on the bottom, everybody, it looks like I get x squared minus 1. Hey, everyone, here's an interesting thing with this one. If you can get to this stage right here, absolutely great. Um, wonderful. I think that's awesome. Um, it actually does go a little further. And, you, you know, as a good mathematician, you're always looking to break things down further and simplify and simplify. So this, if you got here, I, I would be perfectly pleased with it. End of story. I will just kind of tell you sort of this would be a good answer. I will tell you that it, it does factor a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to kind of come up here a little. But that top actually does factor in an interesting way. If you pull out the 2 and then it's a quadratic, it factors like this. And in the bottom, as I'm hoping you all see, it kind of looks like the x plus 1, x minus 1. And as a matter of fact, because they have a common factor, Officially, guys, and again, I'm going through this rather fast because I'm not too overly concerned about it. But again, you're always just sort of looking to keep going and going further and further um, until it can't be simplified. You know, this is the best answer out there. But if, again, if you can get this far, 99% um, of them, it won't be able to kind of go further than that. So just so happened on this one, it did. All right. Well, let's get practice on at least one more there and then kind of see what we can do. Um, I still want to, I guess, come back to this piece really right here. So let me do that just while I'm thinking about it. And it says, why can you do this? Why can we multiply um, by the LCD once, twice, and then once and twice on the bottom? Well, what's interesting, if you notice, let me come back to this first one, example 3a. I'm multiplying the numerator of this fraction, right? Here's the numerator of the fraction. I'm multiplying the numerator of the fraction by x, right? Well, guys, it's a fraction, almost like an equation, if I can use that as my analogy here. It's like an equation where if I do something to the numerator of a fraction, I need to compensate by doing something to the denominator of the fraction. And so if you look at this, if I multiply the top by x, I also have to multiply the bottom by x. Because in reality, guys, what is x divided by x? One on the numerator, one on the denominator. Well, x divided by x is just 1. 
And so in reality, as, as weird as it sounds, I'm really just multiplying this entire thing by one. So I'm not changing its value, I'm just changing its form. Just like over here, let's take a peek. I multiplied this into the numerator, and then I multiplied this into the entire denominator. Well, multiplying something into the numerator and denominator by the same thing is really multiplying by one, because this over the same thing is one. It's kind of interesting. So I don't know, let, let's just write it in very quick and then we'll go on. So when you multiply the numerator and denominator, of a fraction by the same term, you're basically multiplying it by one. And thus, you're not changing the value, you're just changing the form. And that's what I'll just write up here quickly. You aren't changing its value. So you're, be, you're able to manipulate it without distorting it. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, these are, these are hard, but we're going to see quite a few of these. And uh, let's see if we can kind of do another good one here, letter C, and then maybe we'll kind of figure out what to do on letter D. All right, everyone, let's do it. I'm going to go right here and just rewrite. just helps me. So 2 over x plus 1, 3 over x, 4 over x plus 1, and then 5 over 1. LCD, everyone, let's take a peek. I'm getting LCD as x and x plus 1. Everyone stare at those four fractions, four denominators in particular. Make sure you do see that. So I'm seeing x and x plus 1 as the LCD. All right, so... Let's go for it. So here's the overall numerator. I'm going to multiply that by x, x plus 1. Can't just do that in a fraction. I have to do the same thing to the denominator. So again, this really only works nicely in these compound fractions. So try to target just doing it on this piece. Okay, let's see if you can pull this off. This, this would be great if you can go 4 for 4. Distribute this into each of the four fractions. Cancel out anything. And that's, all these should go away and see what you end up getting. All right, here's what happens. So when I distribute it into the first one, the x plus 1s cancel. And you get x times 2, which is 2x. Again, if you didn't see that, I'll try to be quick and write it off to the side here. This is basically what you're doing. That's the operation I'm asking you to pull off. And the x plus 1s cancel. So you get 2x. Okay, reset and do it again. In this case, when I distribute it in here, it looks like the x's would cancel, and I get 3 times x plus 1. At this stage, everyone, if you're okay with it, I'm going to just say it's 3x plus 3. Again, if you didn't see it, this is basically what I'm asking you to do on that second one. x's would cancel, and you get 3x plus 3. Okay, next one, let's go down to the bottom here, bottom left x plus 1 should cancel, and I'm getting a 4x. I'll write off to the side just in case you're still not seeing that piece, but basically that's what I'm asking you to do. x plus 1's cancel. One on top, one on bottom, and you get 4x. And then last but not least there, nothing cancels because you have a denominator of 1, so let's just go ahead and multiply all that in, and you get a 5 times the x times x plus 1, if everyone's okay, I think I'll try to do that. It looks like we get 5x squared and a 5x. So I did it this time. I actually distributed it, and I'm hoping everyone's all right with that piece. So 5x squared and then 5x. Okay, I think we're one step away from success here. Clean up the numerator, everyone. 2x and 3x make 5x. So you have 5x plus 3. Uh, down on the denominator there, just be a little extra careful. I should have done that right away myself, but um, definitely with subtraction, it's minus the whole thing. So be a little extra careful. I should have emphasized that a little more. 
I get when all is said and done there, you get a negative 5x squared from here distributing in, and then 4x minus 5x is a negative 1x. Okay. I know this factor is down on the bottom. It looks like you can pull out an x, but there's no common x on top. So I think leaving it like that is perfectly fine. All right. Well, this last one. This last one comes directly from a calculus class, as a matter of fact. Um, so you know, this, this manipulation is an interesting one. I'm going to do this. I think that's a good start. And let's go for it. I'm going to go through it. If, if you've kind of lost your focus at this stage, that's fine. If, if you can really uh, focus on A, B, and C and do well with those, I think that's good. I'm going to teach D. And if you want to see it, of course, stay with the video here. If not, you know, no harm. It's okay. But this is an interesting one, especially those who are going to go on to some higher level math. As I said, it comes directly from a calc class. So I'm going to go for it. LCD is x, x plus h. Good one. And so I'm going to rewrite. also helps me. So this is what I'm looking at right here. And x, x plus h is our winner. So only three fractions to multiply it into. And this one I like also because it really emphasizes being careful on subtraction. I've given this to students over the years, and you know most of the mistakes that I've seen students make on it deals with the subtraction piece. So I will try to be a little extra careful with it. OK, here we go. So first and foremost, three times when I do it in the first, I hope everyone sees at this stage really seeing it, x plus h is cancel. 1 times x is x. Here's my minus. Reset, guys, and let's distribute it in there. When I do that, it looks like the x's will cancel, which is exactly what I want. And now I did it at least initially there. Because it's subtraction, I put the second piece in parentheses. Now when this goes, distributes into here, there's really nothing that cancels out. You just kind of get an x and an h and an x plus h. I'm going to leave it like that. All right. Let's just clean up the top and see what we want and see what happens. So guys, don't, don't forget in this case, it's minus x and it's minus h. So you get x minus x. I'm going to rewrite that. So x minus x minus h. That might be helpful to kind of see. And now as you can see though, x minus x. Hey everyone, what is x minus x? Yeah, that part just goes to zero. So you just get that negative 1h over that piece right there. Neat. Now, again, if you left it like this, it's good. It's good. But I think we can go further. And I think you're all capable of pulling this off. So remember how we kind of started rational expressions. If there is a common factor in the numerator and denominator, it gets canceled. And I see this is a common factor, h on top, h on the bottom and they go away. And so I'm going to have to bring this up here. When we cancel out the h, I just get a negative 1, and it's x, x plus h. And as I said, it comes really directly from a calc class. There are some things you'll do with h that would ask us to go a touch further. But for right now, I think that's nice. Whew. All right, so some pretty heavy-duty rational expressions here. We've done some, uh, some good stuff on them, six different things. The, the question is, can you sort of target all six and uh, keep it all processed properly? All right, everyone, I, if you have questions, obviously, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, but get the practice problems on this, really work through, and uh, just let me know.